So for wiring it up, I'm going to be trying to use mainly T-Spec hardware. Uh, I've got a couple of 3 meter 2 channel T-Spec RCA sets here and a compression fit mini ANL T-Spec fuse holder. So th those are really good, I love them. Wiring wise, I will be using probably some of this good quality 4 gauge monster cable. You know, he doesn't need cheap and nasty, but he doesn't need the absolute top notch. Um, so this stuff will do fine. We got some, so we got the red for the power, and then obviously the black for the ground. And I'll put a couple of nice big uh, fat crimps on there and solder them for a good connection to the battery and to the chassis. Uh, for speaker wire, what we tend to do here for speaker wire is we have these rolls of trailer cable, which has five cores up to seven cores each um, you got five amp and 10 amp and 15 amp and all that so what I like to use is just 10 amp so you can see it's got five cores in there uh, I use two lots of this uh, five core 10 amp and that covers 10 wires which is enough for four speakers and sometimes I run the remote wire use one of the spare cores as the remote wire as well um, Obviously I test it first to make sure no noise is coming through when the engine is running and if it is then uh, I stop using that as a remote wire and run a whole separate one. So that's what I'll do, I'll use probably about 3 metres of power cable for the uh, power supply and then you know 3 metres of, uh, it'll be 6 metres of this because it'll be 2 lots and then I'll limit it all up and it should be good. Alright there we go, got myself 3 metres of good quality power cable. 6 meters of speaker cable cut off. I probably will use less than that, but the good thing about it is I can, I know that I've got 6 meters there, so now I can cut off whatever I don't use and know how much I have used. And then got a spare piece of this, like in, in the good old junk box wire, good quality. That'll be fine, and you won't have to pay anything for that. Piece of ground cable. Time to start running some wires. Quick technical tip here. Um, I don't know if, how many of you wonder about this, but I've seen quite a few uh, DIY installs that do it quite nastily. The way we get our power wires through the firewall is I've got here just a piece of, you know, strong number eight wire. We use these as a mouse wire. We find the, the main grommet, which you can see up there in the corner. find that and then we very carefully we have a sharpened end we poke it through there and then it's just a matter of retrieving it from the other side which I've already done so that that's just coming straight down from where that loom goes you can almost see the see it through there um, different cars they'll have them in different places Sometimes we go from the bonnet, most of the time we go from the bonnet side through to the inside of the car, but this time it was convenient to do it the other way around. So that's what I've done. And now it's just a matter of attaching the four gauge wire to here uh, with a whole lot of electrical tape so that it holds on real well, putting some silicon uh, spray on there as some lubricant and pulling it through from the other side. And I'll try and video that and show you how I do it. just a little bit for some lubrication. This stuff slides rubber real easy. Here we go, she's coming. Mm, got it. Love it when it works first go. And there. I can pull that through more. Now the power wire is inside the car and this end is just gonna run along here with the main loom down the side tuck around somewhere I'll figure out what's gonna look best and then there'll be a fuse holder mounted somewhere before it goes onto the positive terminal so here's my ground loom made up 
just a piece of you know nice four gauge wire got this nicely crimped and heat shrunk with the big crimpers for these great big crimps here and heat shrunk it to make it look good done the same for the positive end right here's the new amplifier that we know is going to fit under the passenger seat it's the JBL uh, it's the JBL GTO 8804EZ does about 85 watts uh, AMS per channel so that'll be great for the speakers um, and like I say we know this one is going to fit under the passenger seat so I can pretty much go ahead slam it in there and start wiring it up okay so I've got the amp in there just sitting loosely all wired up you know got all the wires and everything in and it goes which is great I've got the gains pretty much set unfortunately there is a problem with mounting there is a ridge right under about here so the whole unit rocks there's just too much clearance under the feet to just go screwing straight through so what I'm doing is making a MDF baffle which is going to be the exact footprint of the amp which will go under it and you know it'll be nicely painted black and you know nice and simple and then that will be secured onto the ridge like with you know a few screws down the centre and then the amp will secure to the baffle and we'll be good to go just tidy the wires and the carpet up a wee bit and it'll be finished um, up here it's all entirely back together and finished up here. Took a bit of um, playing around with resistors and whatnot, but I finally got all the steering wheel controls going. We found the problem we were having was that, uh, you know, the, the four basic buttons, volume and seeking, were on one channel, and then the source, the phone controls, and the voice control button were all on the other channel, but the exact same frequency, uh, not frequencies, the exact same impedance. So this, uh, the stereo could not detect the difference between them so what I had to do was put a 1k2 resistor in line with channel 2 and then parallel that on and then parallel the other end of that onto channel 1 and after that everything uh, started working and it's good to go okay the amp is fully wired up and mounted nice and tidily and now the seat just folds, uh, it's just going to go down the top, bolt down, and then that'll be the job pretty much done. So there it is behind the passenger seat with the seat as far forward as it goes. But as you can tell, no one's going to sit with the seat that far forward, so we can put this back. Right, the car is officially finished. Um, so the total rundown is Parrot Smart Head Unit with fitting kit. The head unit has been connected to the factory auxiliary input. All, uh, all seven steering wheel control buttons, uh, microphone and everything, GPS all wired up, the USB and iPod cables are in the centre pocket down there. Also hooked to a four channel amp under the driver's, uh, under the passenger's seat, which is powering two Alpine Type R coaxial speakers and two Alpine Type R component speakers installed a reversing camera which can be accessed on both accessory just like that or when the car is on if you put it into reverse it shows up also installed a, a hardwire lead for his radar detector when he gets that and removed about did an hour's worth of work removing old Japanese wiring got all of the steering wheel controls going so volume up and down seek up and down source change uh, voice control voice command please cancel um, the answer button and the hang up button which can be used as contacts who do you want to call cancel or the end button also works as a back button so you can press that to go home
That's where the reversing camera is mounted. And that's what it looks like when you're in reverse. You can see the tow bar pop out of reverse, back to home. Thanks for watching this video guys, sorry I couldn't document more of it, I was quite under the hammer to get it all done in time for the customer to take it away and go off travelling. Uh, if you did like this video please please hit the old uh, like button or share it or leave me a comment or something because it gives me inspiration to do more of these videos. Uh, if it wasn't of any use to you then thanks for watching anyway. Cheers guys, bye.